Hey everybody, this is Warren Spector here, creative director on Junction Point's new Mickey Mouse game for the Wii. We've been working on Disney Epic Mickey for a while now, and it's great to be able to talk about it, finally. For those of you who haven't read Game Informer's November 2009 issue, or who haven't been keeping up with the online coverage, let me tell you a little bit about the project. Our main goal from the start has been to reinvigorate Mickey Mouse. He's a great character, of course, one of the most popular movie stars of the last 80 years, but today he's best known for being an icon on a t-shirt or a toddler's best virtual pal. Job one for us is to remind Mickey, and all of you folks of course, that he used to be an action hero, a cartoon star, capable of doing amazing impossible things. He was a mischievous guy too, not the always happy, ever polite guy we know today. We want to bring all that heroism and yes, even some bad behavior back. We think Mickey can be as relevant to today's gamers as he was to millions of moviegoers of all ages in the 1920s and 30s. It'd be crazy for me or the Junction Point team to presume to tell all of you what makes Mickey cool. The greatest thing about games is that they offer players the opportunity to make their own choices, their own decisions. And that means we can let each and every one of you tell us what you think makes Mickey cool. Is Mickey the happy, helpful hero of today? Behave like that and you'll become our hero Mickey, like the guy you see here. He's bright, colorful, has a flesh-toned face like modern Mickey, and we borrowed the yellow glove idea from old Mickey Mouse movie posters because we thought it looked cool. Act like the helpful hero some of the time and like a mischievous scrapper other times and you'll look more like this. Check out the white face and white gloves. That's old school 1930s vintage Mickey Mouse when he wasn't quite as badly behaved as in his earliest cartoons but wasn't yet the mom friendly guy he is today. This is for players who want to be a hero but not always. And then there's this guy. We call him the Scrapper. He's inspired by the troublemaker of the earliest Mickey cartoons and by the Mickey of the 1995 cartoon Runaway Brain. Trust me that the image here is one of the tamer representations of Scrapper Mickey. If you play through the game fighting and damaging stuff, ignoring pleas for help, you can still be a hero of sorts. And you might be a pretty powerful guy, but you won't have many friends. The straight ahead loner approach has its benefits, but also its costs. And not to give away too much, but how you play doesn't just change the way you look. It affects your abilities, the way other characters treat you, the missions you go on, all sorts of stuff. If you ever visit us here at Junction Point, you'll see the walls plastered with signs that read, Play Style Matters. We mean that, and that's expressed in your Mickey avatar. How you play determines who you become. If making Mickey cool was job one for us, reintroducing Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was job two by a hair. Okay, sorry for the pun. If you don't know who Oswald is, you're not alone. Fact is, he's all but forgotten today, but back in 1927, 1928, he was Walt Disney's one and only cartoon star, one of the biggest cartoon stars of the silent movie era. Disney lost the rights to Oswald in a contract dispute with his distributor, and that's the only reason Mickey Mouse came into existence. We're bringing the little guy back in Disney Epic Mickey. But our version of Oswald isn't the happy-go-lucky, always up for a tussle, always falling in love guy from the old cartoons. Our Oswald knows he was rejected by Walt Disney in favor of Mickey Mouse, and he isn't happy about it. One of the most important things the player has to do in the game is get Oswald to stop resenting Mickey and start helping him. And believe me when I tell you, Oswald's knowledge and unique abilities will come in really handy. So we have a hero and a half-brother, and a whole host of other characters we're not going to talk about here. Where does the action take place? Disney Epic Mickey is set in a world of forgotten and rejected Disney creativity. Anything Disney artists, animators, imagineers, and even licensors came up with in the last 80 years might be found in this world if it's been forgotten by fans or rejected by Disney himself. In this world, you find old forgotten characters, retired theme park attractions, background paintings, concept sketches, moth-eaten character costumes from the park, audio-animatronic robots whose joints have seized up, anything and everything Disney. In Disney Epic Mickey, you'll explore places that seem sort of like the theme park rides you know and love, but twisted and dangerous. You never know what's going to come to life to threaten Mickey in his quest. Disney castles aren't always magical places. And sometimes the wish your heart makes becomes a nightmare, not a dream. Let's take a closer look at Mickey's nightmare. Here are some actual screenshots from a recent build. We're still honing our art style, but these will give you a good idea of where we're heading. Here's a shot from an early mission. First thing to note is that we're on the Wii. Lots of reasons for that. It's been pretty successful, of course, and it just felt right. Nintendo, like Disney, is all about reaching a broad audience of gamers, non-gamers, kids, adults. The Wii is popular with all of those. I also like the idea of Mickey and Mario and Link together on the same platform, at least virtually. 
And if I was going to take a break from realistic stealthy shooter RPGs, why not go someplace where color and cartooniness are the norm rather than the exception? Finally, once you start talking about a game that involves painting and erasing and such, the Wii Remote and Nunchuck just seem like a good fit. These shots show kind of where we're going with Mickey on the Wii. We're looking for familiar places, but darker, more twisted. And there are parts of the game much more twisted than we're revealing here. In these shots, you can see Mickey using some of his core abilities, engaging in some combat. Always an option, never a necessity in the game. You can see him jumping and platforming. Sometimes it makes sense for Mickey to stand his ground. Sometimes it's just better to run away. The key thing is that players always have options, fight or don't fight. Paint in platforms to make your life easier or erase barriers to clear a more direct path. That's what the game, at least one part of the game, looks like. Some places are happier and more colorful than that, some are darker. But did you notice how some parts of each shot were colorful and others were mostly gray and black? That's not just light and shadows. No, in our game world there are several of what we call states of matter, and that's critical to our gameplay. Some things in our world are colorful, soft, rounded, happy looking. These are cartoon things, and Mickey can erase them if he wants to be our scrapper Mickey. And if he wants, paint them back in. Whether you erase them and whether you paint them in is important. Some other things in our world are dark, pointy, dangerous looking. These we call inert, and Mickey can't erase them and his paint has no effect on them. To get around them or over them, you have to be clever. Your paint and thinner abilities won't help you when interacting with inert stuff in our world. What is this inert stuff and where did it come from? You just have to wait and find out. Now that you know about inert and painted things, let's look at some more screenshots. Here you see Mickey running from something we call a beetle works. These are part painted, part inert things built of discarded animatronic bits. Obviously, Mickey can't just erase them, so he has to find other ways to defeat or get around them. Here, Mickey's being threatened by what we call a bunny kid. I love these guys. If you look over there on the left, you can see a cute, fluffy bunny. And uh, guys like this love you to death. And uh, under certain circumstances, they change into the bigger, deadlier thing on the right. Who are these guys? Again, you'll have to play the game and find out. This is an interesting shot. I I'm not even going to talk about the strange upside-down thing on the left side of the picture. But that movie screen on the right is cool. We use movie screens as a kind of transportation system in our game. Mickey can jump into a screen and go to new places. When he jumps into a screen, Mickey jumps into a movie. These are 2D side-scrolling areas inspired by real cartoons, in this case, the 1937 cartoon Clock Cleaners. When Mickey gets to the end of a 2D movie like this, he jumps into another screen and emerges in a new place. You can learn a lot about the places you're going by paying attention to the 2D movie that takes you there. Here's one last shot. It's kind of subtle, but it's one of my favorites. Why would a non-action shot be one of my favorites? Well, it's for all the things the shot implies. All the things that can happen just seconds after this moment of rest. For starter, there's Mickey. From his white face and white gloves, you can tell he's kind of a middle-of-the-road Mickey. Neither scrapper nor hero. Wonder what he's looking at so intently? I'm not going to tell you. He's about to be jumped by a character called a spatter. Will Mickey erase that guy? Or avoid it by slowing it down? Or by distracting it? Will he decide to go to the trouble of turning it into a friend? If you look carefully, you can see hints of things that have been erased. And no, I'm not going to tell you how to spot them or what they are. Will Mickey paint in the erased things in a small act of heroism? Or will he leave them as is? Each choice comes at a cost. And what's that hut up there in the center? Who lives there? It looks kind of like a happy version of the spatter spawner there on the left side. What's up with that? Will Mickey risk a jump across a pool of deadly thinner to collect a valuable red ticket? Or play it safe and leave the reward where it is? Or will he try to find a safe way to get to it that isn't evident here? Simple shot, but lots going on in it. This one shot reveals the results of player choices and offers opportunities for each player to make even more choices. And that's what Disney Epic Mickey is about, in a nutshell. Hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the game. I look forward to hearing about your unique play experience after we ship, and to finding out what makes Mickey Mouse cool to 